So stress reduction. This is probably one of our most popular workshops that we've done throughout the years because this is, in everyone's adult life, it tends to be you know, something that really, really affects your health, your state of mind, and how you relate uh, in your relationships with your family and coworkers and friends and things like that. Okay, so most people expressed a lot of interest in this one. So stress is the cause of all sickness and disease. Okay, now when I say the word stress, people think of stress as mental emotional stress. That's what comes to your mind. But actually, there's three different types of stress. Okay, there's physical stresses, chemical stresses, and mental emotional, which we would kind of think of it when we say the word stress. So, what's, a phys what's an example of a physical stress? A break. A trauma that is able to break a bone, like a car accident or something like that. Could be sitting at your desk for how long? Hunched over, the head going forward. Some repetitive stuff. Rick? One leg shorter than the other? That's a physical stress, right? That's going to affect the uh, alignment and balance and the harmony in the body. What's an example of a chemical stress? Yeah. Processed foods. I mean... Um... Yeah, exactly. Sticking stuff in your body that's not naturally supposed to be there. It's a very good example. Could be some environmental factors as well, right? And then we can think of tons and tons of mental emotional types of stresses. Okay? The, uh, the founder of chiropractic, D.D. D. Palmer, back in 1895, said that the cause of all disease is traumas, toxins, and auto-suggestion. So you can see almost exactly the same thing. Traumas being like a physical stress, toxins, and then auto-suggestion, which is basically your, the power that your mind has over your physical body. Okay, so it's quite interesting. Okay, so when we're talking about sickness and disease, it always breaks down to cellular dysfunction, okay? You cannot tell me one physical ailment that can be happening in a person's body that doesn't break down to something is happening as far as dysfunction at the level of the cell, right? If all of the cells in your body are functioning at 100% perfect function, what problems would you have? What symptoms would you have? Nothing, right? It's like if every piece of your car was perfect, you could just keep on driving it and driving it. You won't have any car problems, okay? So you cut your finger, that's damaged cells. All right, we'll circle back to this in a bit. So the only cure, the only cure for you know, sickness and disease, eradicating that, is increasing cellular function. So I want you guys to really think about that. People tend to focus all the time on the symptoms, you know, the red zone up here. You see that? They don't ever tend to think about not... I'm not saying everybody. Of course, nobody in this room. You know, this is a very sharp group. <laughs> very dedicated, right? They're, they're here on a Monday night, you know, spending a half hour so we can go over things. But people, you know, I've been doing this for 15 years. People really focus on their symptoms. And then once the symptom's gone, they think everything's fine. Even if they just were able to rise above that threshold and they never really took the steps to get back up to optimal health or as close as what is optimal for them at that time. Okay, so keep that in mind. If all of your 100 trillion cells that make up your earth suit, this living physical body, if everything was functioning perfectly, you wouldn't have any health problems. Okay. So this is gonna get a little bit deep. So just a warning, don't try and memorize anything. You don't have to be scrolling out notes, but I'm just gonna go through something with you called the stress response. And it doesn't matter if it's a mental emotional stress, a physical stress, or a chemical stress, your body is going to physiologically react in the same way that it would to any stressor, okay? This is quite interesting. So it's gonna be pretty involved here for a couple of minutes, but it's gonna circle back to a very important point, okay? So 
the stress response. What's the first thing that happens? Okay, let's just talk about any physiological thing. You're a caveman. This is what they always, in any, uh, any college, when they're talking about the stress response, they always use the caveman and the saber-toothed tiger, okay? <laughs> in any, uh, any physiology course. So you're a caveman or cavewoman. You're at the watering hole, you know, drinking some water. Calm, it's a beautiful day. Your heart rate is low. Everything's great. You're relaxed. And then from around the corner, out jumps the saber-toothed tiger, okay? So what's the first thing that happens? <laughs> right? I know everyone's saying the fight or flight, and that's exactly right. But the first thing that happens is your nervous system detects a stimuli, right? Something, you heard it through your ear, right? Through the optic nerve, the eye, you know, sending messages to the brain. Something got picked up. Now your brain says, okay, what are we going to do here? And then we go into fight or flight. So the body, you need to do something. You're either going to get out of there as fast as possible or you're going to have to fight for your life. Okay? This is any time you get a stressor on the body. Okay. So the first thing that happens after that is you're going to release a hormone called adrenaline. Now adrenaline getting released into the body is going to do a number of different things. Okay? It's going to increase the heart rate. Increase cardiac output. And why? Because if you're going to run for your life, your heart rate needs to increase. Your cardiac out output needs to increase. Okay, vasoconstriction, vasodilation. So basically, that's certain things are going to be like the blood in the body. For example, the blood to your digestive system is going to be shunted away. Because you don't need to be digesting your lunch right now. You need the blood and all your skeletal muscles so that you can do this fight or flight. Okay? That's what that means. Okay, liberation of free fatty acids into the bloodstream. Okay, for some fast, quick energy. Shutting down receptors for LDL uptake, which is bad cholesterol, even though bad cholesterol doesn't really exist. But it's going to be increasing that and shutting down the production of HDL, or aka good cholesterol. Like I said, it's getting a little deep. I, I know that. I don't want too many you know, eyes glazing over here. Stay with me as much as possible. And if anyone wants this, I can also, uh, you can take photos, but it's, I can print it off for you too if you want me to. Um, releasing the hormone called cortisol. That's the next thing that happens, okay? Breaking down glycogen in the liver to make glucose. Increasing blood sugar. Why do we need to do that if we're going to fight or flight? We need some fast energy, right? Okay. Insula, insulin receptors get down-regulated, basically, so you're not going to be uptaking all that blood sugar. You know, you want that there for energy. Okay. Sharpen signal detection system at the expense of concentration. Okay. Because you don't need to have the Krebs cycle memorized right now and go through that. You're not going to be uh, able to calculate, you know, Pythagorean theorem right now. You don't need to do that. Concentration goes away so that you can be reacting in this fight or flight, okay? Increased emo emotional st stress response. Decreased short-term memory and rational thought. Again, because you're not going to be able to memorize things and concentrate. Okay, and then liberation of free fatty acids, increased cholesterol, which we talked about. Okay? What else happens when there's an increased, you know, increase cortisol in the body. Remember, this is any time that you're under stress. This could be, man, my work day really sucks. Or, you know, I'm having this argument with, with a friend, spouse, something like that. This is what happens every single time. These steps will always happen. Okay? Changes in the body's ability to take up fat. Okay? So, resulting in central pedal obesity or, you know, more around the midsection is what that means. Okay, thyroid problems and growth hormone. Okay, so all this gets swung way out of balance. Why? Because when it's, you're in the stress response, you're in fight or flight, you need to do a lot of things to stay alive in the short term. Okay, this is all needed to survive. If, you, if this didn't happen, remember the body's intelligent, right? 
the innate intelligence of the body is highly intelligent, way more than our educated thoughts that we come up with, you know, in our own science and things like that. Okay, the body's doing something very intelligent here. Okay, so to st survive a stressful situation, and I know we're using the example of a saber-toothed tiger, but this could be anything, right? Like I said, a chemical stress, a physical stress, or mental emotional is very, very powerful on the body as well, okay? So in the short term, it's there to d keep you alive, but as you can tell, if this is kept up for the long term, it's basically going to kill you, right? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Because you can't have all these factors. You can't have increased heart rate, increased cardiac output, increased free fatty acids, and increased blood sugar all the time, or the health is really going to be suffering that as a result of that. Okay, that's really the main point that I you know, went through all those complex things that we don't really care about the details of that, I understand. But I want you to understand that the physiological process that anytime you have a stressful thing that happens, this is what's going to happen. Okay? We already talked about plenty of examples. Hey, what's the matter you? So, one of the most important things is identifying the stressors in your own life. People ask us, Dr. Bemis and I, all the time, like, what's causing this? Or why did this happen to me? Or did I sleep on it funny? It's like, I have absolutely no idea is the, the honest answer, right? So we try to do certain things, present them in a certain way so that you start thinking about your own life differently. Like, what could be the cause of this? Okay? We already talked about, you know, many chemical stressors, physical stressors. This is a big one, you know, the the workstations and the texting and you know everybody's got a phone these days we're all on them and it's not just the kids it's all of us okay that's never me by the way <laughs> very patient caring driver <laughs> all right so i don't think this is going to be a surprise for anybody i'm just putting this up here as the things that are most commonly associated with just stress on the body, right? All these factors. I don't think it's a surprise, right? The heart disease, the strokes, high blood pressure, all those things go hand in hand anyways, right? Okay. The overeating is something that comes into play as well because as, as the body's chemistry is changing, and the, the blood sugars and the free fatty acids, you know, the bodies, you actually have an increased physiological need or want for like these simple sugars and things like that. But if we're not doing anything to burn that up, it's not a real good thing for the body to start with anyway. But if you're not doing anything to burn that up, the body's intelligent. It's like, all right, we better store this for the next stress response that's coming down the pipe like it does how many times every day, you know, in most people's lives. So let's just back up here. Identifying the things in your own life. Think about it. How powerful is it to take a pen and paper and just write down what are the top 10 things in your life that stress you out the most? Not the top 10 patients, Dr. Bemis, you know. <laughs> just kidding. We don't let anyone like that in here. <laughs> Only the nice ones. Okay, but you know, it's a good exercise. Writing is a good exercise for anything. Writing out a list of things you wanna do for the day, things you're gonna accomplish, it's very powerful. It's more powerful than like typing in your phone, like I tend to do when I'm in a hurry, you know, making these notes and things. It's so much more powerful using the physical pen and paper. But try to identify these things, especially if you think that if, if this is like really hitting home for you, like, man, I do have like loads of stress and it feels like it's bearing down on me almost to the point where I'm physically folding over. You know, this good thing is just write them out because first thing you need to do is identify them. If you just want to like put something in the back and shove it in your subconscious and think it's going to take care of itself, it's not going to. Okay. So now that we've identified this, because this is an activity I know everyone's going to do right away when they get home. First thing. 
before they pop that television on, right? Now what we want to do is identify the things that you enjoy that you know are going to be decreasing the stress response. So it's three, stress comes in three different types. So we can't just think of what are my mental, emotional stressors? Like, hey, what are the physical stressors? For me, I'm a chiropractor. You know, it's like I'm bending over this adjusting table. I need to do something every single day to counteract those stresses, right? Stretching and certain exercises and things. Otherwise, I'm going to be like, I've seen chiropractors at the seminars that are like ready to retire and they're like totally bent over like this. That's not going to be me. But I know that I've identified that as a stress in my life. So what are the physical stresses on the body? Okay. What are the chemical stresses? And it, when it comes to that, it's like, okay, we really need to look at like what are we putting in the body? And the more you think about this and become in tune with it, the more you're really going to be able to say, or you're going to be able to feel how you react to certain foods and things like that. Right? I love ice cream, but you know what? I have one bowl of ice cream every year and it's at this family gathering where all the, the nephews, they crank this pail of, and they make the ice cream. And that's the one bowl of ice cream I have every year because it just does not affect me well. It, it, it's, I just don't like it. I like it when it's, I'm having it, but you know, the, I know personally for me, I just don't like it. Chocolate's the same thing. I love chocolate, just like probably everyone else in the room. But if I have chocolate, like an hour later, I'll get a headache. It's, you know, it's, I think it's just too much. It's whatever it is. It doesn't affect me well, so I don't do it. Look at his shirt there. Do you know that chiropractic care increases your ability to be a good fisherman? <laughs> it's a proven fact. It's been proven. Okay? So, again, you know, I think what we need to do is really identify what are the stressors and how are we specifically going to counteract those on a daily basis? Okay, one thing that I do is... Um, I do a lot of steams and saunas like every week, almost every single day. I leave this office and go to the sports car because it's one of the ways that I will um, chemically de-stress the body. You know, it's a big detoxifier. And it's also a big mental, emotional detoxifier for me. Not really a detoxifier, but more of just like a meditative, you know, I have to work with a lot of people during the day. So it's just a way to just be quiet and get back inside myself again so I can be who and what I need to be the next day. Okay? So one of the, the best things, obviously, is chiropractic care. Now, I don't, everyone in here is pretty much, you know, has been adjusted. They know about this, but I'm going to go through some of the things that actually happens. It's been clinically proven to decrease the stress response in the body, okay? So, Obviously, you know, when we're back in adjustment, pain and symptoms tend to really disappear in the body. You know, we see that all the time. Doc, doc and I, it's like people jump up off the adjusting table and they'll say, oh, that feels so much better already. Well, did the body really have that much of a chance to make new cells and heal everything up? No, but it's just like when things are in balance, the body is, knows when to go in the right direction. It's in there. Okay. More energy. Okay. Charging up the brain, sharpening the mind, increased visceral output. So that's all your organ systems, the things that you're not, you know, consciously controlling. Increased immune response. This is one thing that people get so surprised about. They're like, man, I used to catch every cold that came around, get the flu every year, and I haven't even been sick since I've been getting adjusted. Sounds like voodoo, but actually when your nervous system is in balance when your brain, spinal cord, and nerves are in balance and they're not getting stressed and subluxated on a weekly basis, of course your immune response is going to be better. Everything's in communication with the brain. The brain needs to talk to the body. The body needs to talk to the brain for you to be functioning up in our uh, optimal health zone here. Okay? Like this. Everybody wants to be like this. If you're subluxated, your system looks like this. Right? Who wants to be like this? Nobody. Do you want to wait for pain and symptoms to show up? 
Everybody wants to be like this, but there's only one way to get there is to have somebody call the chiropractor, put their hands on your spine and check to see what needs to be adjusted. I'm a chiropractor. I don't know when I need to be adjusted. That's why Dr. Venus gets me checked. He puts his hands on my spine and adjusts what needs to be adjusted. Okay? Inhibit adverse emotions. Well, that would be a good thing for any situation, right? Okay. So we already talked about, you know, hopefully you guys kind of have, you know, some things going in your mind of, hey, what are the things I'm going to identify as stressors? And then what am I going to do to counteract that, basically?